Kids 101! Hey Kids Kids One Crew, uh, today for a Halloween special, we're going to be ranking every scary story to tell in the dark uh, story. There's a lot of stories, man. See, I already own the book, so this would be easy. But it turns out, I didn't have like the original series. I had these, which I'm going to be thinking, Brian, it's the same stories, who cares? The problem is that for some reason, they toned down literally every drawing in the book. If you think this is anywhere near as scary as this thing, then you're lying to yourself and you're lying to me. And I thought you could do better. So I started thinking, I can't rank these stories with these pictures. No, you can't make me improvise. Book one, I found it online, completely legal. Book two, they had it in my school library. Book three, I couldn't find it anywhere, so I bought a new copy. So now I own two copies of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark 3, More Tales to Chill Your Bones. Am I proud of that fact? Yes, yes I am. I hope you guys enjoy. I thought this would be a great video for Halloween. <laughs> so Barome is like a song about two corpses that don't know that the other corpse is dead. Of, of course the corpses wouldn't know each other are corpses. They're not ghosts or ghasts or ghouls or zombies. They are dead bodies. This story isn't scary or funny for that matter. Every second I think about this one, the more angry I get. So let's just move on. Thumpity Thump is about a family being haunted by a ghost of some sort. It moves chairs around. It's a spooky time. But then the chair uh, uses its, um, one of its legs, which it's made of wood. It wouldn't really be able to bend that. Down to a basement. Then they follow the chair and find a dead body. Cool. The strangest part about the story is that it's in the funny section of the book. Of course, most of the funny stories are going to be pretty close to the bottom because this is ranking off spook factor. But like, the story wasn't funny enough to be in a funny section, but sure as heck wasn't scary enough to be in any of the other sections. So yeah, that was kind of lame. The white satin evening gown is about a girl who wants to get a new dress. Pretty epic. She goes to a thrift store and finds one and she wears it and then she dies. Oops! It's real that she died because it, it was on a body during a funeral and the embalming fluid in the dress killed her. What? If the story mentioned that maybe during the dance she got a little bit of a scratch, <laughs> resulting in some of that embalming fluid to get into her bloodstream, then sure, fine. A little far-fetched, but fine. She just wears the dress? and then she's deceased. Let me get you guys in on a little secret. I'm no embalming fluidologist, but according to the World Wide Web, it takes around one ounce of embalming fluid to kill a human being. One ounce might not sound like a lot, but it is sure a lot to somehow get into your bloodstream. How did she even like, do that. More realistically, I say about a book filled with ghost stories, she probably would have gotten high as frick, but we're left here with this illogical mess. At least the concept of death is a little bit of a spooktacular fright, unlike Baroom and Thumpity Thump, which have no resemblance to anything scary. This story gave me a bit of whiplash. So we start off with this dude named Billy. Billy gets in a fight with another dude. I'm thinking, oh, these kids had a bit of a kerfuffle on the playground. Said that the kid drove up. Okay, guess they're not kids. And shot him. Yikes! That's not a fight! That's a drive-by shooting! But don't worry, it's not a drive-by because they were on horseback! That's right, it took place in the Wild West the whole time. Why weren't we informed of this in the beginning? I don't know! And after that point, he's followed around by a little black dog that keeps shedding all over him. He's like, stop! And the dog is... A little black dog. It's not even like a big spooky wolfman or a scary dog. It's a tiny black dog, and then it, and then he dies. He's just found dead with dog hair on him. Come on, man. I'm always down for a little bit of a mauling every now and then. But there was no mauling. Billy was found dead with dog hair on him, without a scratch. So we got this lady. She wants to make some soup, but. She needs a soup bone. What's a soup bone? I'm not sure. 
Anyway, she gets the soup bone from a dead body she finds, as you do. And when she eats that bone into the soup, the body gets a little bit mad. Eventually, the old lady throws the soup bone back to the old ghost and is all like, Hey, frick you, ghost. And the ghost leaves her alone. It's supposed to be like a funny version of The Big Toe, which is the first story from the first book. But it's just not funny or scary. This is a common problem with a lot of these funny stories. And I think it kind of sucks. Alright, so this lady cuts a dude's head off. Real cool. We got the generic scary stories of Tell the Dark setup of her being all alone, like, oh man, I'm an elderly woman and I'm so, so scared. And then the ghost comes and it's repetitive stuff like, booga booga, I want to ghost. And she's all like, oh no, and says something else repetitive and then it keeps going back and forth until it ends. You have to jump out and punch your friend in the shoulder and scream. And your friend's like, what the frick, dude? And I'm just like, the book told me to. A dude's approached by a creepy guy in the sparking lot that's all like, Oh yeah, man, wanna see my knives? Uh, the knives cut real good. He's all like, Oh no, I don't wanna be stabbed to death. But it turns out, it's just a traveling knife salesman. You know, we've all been there. You know, when you're just in the Macy's parking lot and you see the traveling knife salesman who's tossed around the knife threatening to shank you violently. You know, it's a relatable tale for all. 10 out of 10. Except for the fact that it isn't. Tom goes to a party, but he realizes he's being followed by his friend Kate, who is dead. Whoa! So you spend like a page and a half or so building up like he keeps trying to uh, dip and dive and dodge and dodge and weave into the crowds, but Kate keeps following him. It's scary. I'm ready for the worst. It's building up. It's building up. And then she does nothing and he goes home and nothing happens. Kate, you loser. What's wrong with you? The buildup was great. If we just, you know, just get into that ending and just change it a bit, maybe saying, then he was violently stabbed by Kate or something, that would have been cool. But come on, you can't just have a ghost do nothing. You know, I'm gonna be real with you. I never found witches that scary. Is this biased? Yeah, but so is the whole list, because it's my opinion. So pretty much what goes on is that there's a cat that keeps stealing this this guy's meat. And he's like, whoa, what the frick, dude? Cat, stop! And the cat's all like, yikes, chief, what if I don't, though? So then he catches the cat, chops its hand off, and then a witch lady comes by and her hand's missing. Was the witch a cat? It's heavily implied. It starts off as your pretty basic scary story, and he's like, oh, something's going on in the basement, oh, and he goes upstairs, like, uh-oh, what am I gonna find? And then he screams, and then you have to ask, why did he scream? It's like, because he stepped on a nail, which that'd be perfectly fine and good. The problem with that is, like, one-third of all of these stories have characters screaming for no reason. You can't just say that you know that this trope is bad, and then continue to do the trope constantly. Come on, man. Come on. Pretty much, guitarist goes to a hotel and there's this ghost there and she's all like, woo, my fingers have blood on them. And the guitarist's like, aight fam, pretty cool. And then it's over. Don't like it. Girl stands on a grave. It was a dare, what can I say? And then she's grabbed by something and then is found deceased. The twist around here is that Actually, her dress got caught, causing her to f f fall over and then die of fright. I don't know about that one, Chief. I actually think the build-up's quite cool. I think the ending is quite hilarious and a little real knee slapper. But again, rank is spooky. So pretty much the dude He's looking for a place to go. He goes to a church and then he goes to that church and he's like, ah! GHOSTS! Turns out, they were just sheep. This is not equivalent to, to this, alright? I hate to break it to you, gamer. So pretty much, a fat lady, blah, dead. And then one day, a dude sees a hog in the road, and he's like, Bro, is that a pig? Is that the dead fat girl? And yikes, that didn't age well! Ignoring its not-so-great connotations, again, why? Oh, the, the pig speaks. I forgot to mention that the, that the pigs speak. So pretty much a brown suit. They're like, hey man, this boy is dead. 
can we put him in a brown suit, mister? Thank you. And he's like, okay. And he's like, sorry about that. Must have been a lot of work. He's like, not bad. We already got a body in the other room. So we just switched their heads. Uh, I actually kind of like the brown suit. You know, I think it's a perfect blend of disturbing and kind of goofy. You know, what should be in a funny section of a spooky storybook? But uh, the drawing is of the brown suit on a hanger even though the brown suit's supposed to be on a body. So, zero out of 10, it sucks, and I hate it. Woman keeps getting some threatening calls, like, I'm the viper, I'm gonna vipe your vase, Voff. And she's like, ah, which makes sense. But it turns out, he's a window wiper, and he has a goofy accent. You've all been there, relatable, but I will say the, the build-up is pretty good, so that's why it got a bit higher than some of the other funny stories here. In this story, a lady runs over the cat. The cat, it's dead. She didn't want to leave the cat in the middle of the road, so she got a good old shopping bag, yoded that corpse in there, and went off to a diner. But a thefter thefts her cat bag. And she's like, sorry, chief, don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but there's a cat in the bag. And he's like, ah, that sucks. Again, we're ranking these off of spookiness. A lady is dead. Rest in peace, lady. You will be missed. But she's got plenty of rings on her fingers. Hence the name. Some gray robbers like, I chief, be pretty up if I can get some of them ring fingers. And he goes in the casket, finds her body. He just yups those fingers off. But then they start to bleed and he's like, oh no, she's alive. And then he stabs himself on accident. It's heavily unlikely that she would have been buried alive, unless she is a, a ghoul of some sort. Two gamer pals are just into you know, whacking the old ball. Well, they're into playing some baseball, and they're like, I wonder if baseball is in heaven, and then he dies. And he's like, oh, frick, my gamer buddy died. And one day, the gamer buddy comes back to life. He's like, whoa, bro, what's up? Yo, do they got a baseball in heaven? Like, they got good news and bad news. Like, yo, what's the what's the good news? Like, they do. He's like, oh, what's the bad news? Like, you're on next. Oh, okay, he's gonna go up the bat next. Okay, wait a minute. I actually like this one. I think the matter of fact way, it's like, you're gonna die. It's, it's a good time. I'm a fan. Kind of spooky. The Walk. This was one of my favorite stories as a kid. Uh, it's I really like the repetitive nature of like the man scared of the uncle and the uncle scared of the man and the man's afraid of the uncle and the uncle's afraid of the man. It's really cool. Problem is, it just ends with the, the stupid old jump scare at the end, which I hate that. But the passion. I really think that the story had potential, but that ending just ruined it enough to put it this low on the list. The big toe. Y'all know it. Y'all... I don't know your opinion on it. I don't know you. It's a classic. It's the first story of the first book, but I don't find it too scary. Basically, the story goes, a kid's walking around, finds a big old toe. He's like, man, we're gonna eat good tonight, boys, and whops that bad boy off, and he eats it. A few hours later, the ghost, or whatever, the whoever the big toe belonged to, is all like, hey, what the fri- And then, I don't know, because it depends on which ending you choose. Its brand of spookiness is very, like, Tim Burton-like, which I'm a fan of, but I don't flick on Nightmare Before Christmas and then wet night pants, you know? It's it's a fun type of halloween -y spooks, but it isn't like, ah, y you know? The story goes that this lady, she loves Jesus, and she wants to go to a Jesus club, but she realized she's late. She wakes up to a church bound, she runs on down to the church, and she opens it, sits down, she's like, Phew, I made it, but everyone there is dead! Ah! Pretty spooky concept, uh, but the problem is it's, it's kind of silly, you know? All the skeletons are wearing little tuxedos and stuff, and they dan, and then she runs away, and they're tearing out her clothes and stuff, she's all like torn up, and I think good concept. The art in this story looks a lot spookier than anything described in the story, so that definitely gives it some... Uh, thumbs up. So our girl Sarah is just trying to get some sleep, but this freaking thing keeps showing up. So I'm like, hey chief, 
I'm gonna sit around, do nothing in particular, but be kind of scary. And she keeps like, hey mom, hey dad, what the sister Frick sent, help. And they don't do anything. At the end, as you know, predictable, we all knew it was coming, uh, this alien thing does a raspberry to Sarah. What? So yeah, man, just comes up, just goes, and that, that's, that's all. See, I'm a big fan of the artwork, because like, it's really spooky in its own way, you know? But like, a raspberry? Is that the best you could do? I don't even think this thing has a mouth. Where the frick is his mouth? Anyways, the only thing good about this story is it's very good artwork and pretty all right opening bit. So pretty much our good old pal meets this very cool lady at a bus stop. Like every now and then they meet up at the bus stop, hang out, have a wonderful time. One day, she stops showing up to the bus stop. He's like, oh frick dude, Oh no! So he goes to her her mom's house like, Hey dude, where's your daughter? What, what, what's she up to? And her mom's like, My daughter died two years ago! And it's a spooky time. And I guess you could say he got... Ghosted. <laughs> it's less scary, more just incredibly depressing. Oof, that's unfortunate, man. So the plot of this one is that there's a witch, and the witch's name is Jessica. Made that up. The witch shows up in this dude's house like, I chief, yeehaw, and he, she turns him into a horse and they ride around all night, and he hates it. So one day he decides, you know, I think I know who's doing this, and goes over and turns her into a horse. And then he nails some good old horseshoes on her feet, and she's like, I don't like that. And then she wakes up, and then the next morning she's a human, but she still has the horseshoes on her feet. And, you know, I think this is spooky. It's very similar in goofiness as, like, the big toe. But I do think that having uh, horseshoes nailed to your feet would kind of suck. I remember this one, we used to sing it a lot in like music class during the spooky Halloween time. So pretty much the old lady's like, man, she, the old lady goes to a priest like, hey chief, I'm gonna die. And he's like, yeah man, and she's like, what's it gonna be like when I die? And she's like, oh yeah, it's gonna go off your nose and it'll be scary and the hearse will come by. And then she's like, ah! How is the scream relevant to the story at all? I don't know, but the story ends with her screaming. I don't like the story's jump scares at the end. It's just no context, suddenly screaming. Like, imagine if like full length books ended like that. Like, like you're finished reading War and Peace and it just ends with a solid scream. Is that relevant to the story? No, no it's not. All right, this is kind of different than the other stories because it's not a story, it's a game that you need friends to play, and God knows I don't have friends. It was pretty lame to read, you know, it's like, oh, it's the dead man's eyeball, and you hand him some grapes, but maybe it'd be scary to play? I don't know, man, I haven't played it. This one's, this one's a lot different than the other ones in its own little way, because it uses, like, old-timey language, and, I, like, I don't know what a schooner, a schooner is, isn't that like that horrible comedian that no one likes? But there's like a bunch of ghosts on a, on a train, I think, and they're all like, spooky ghosts. This story follows a nice guy, and he just want to carry this old lady basket for her. And she's all like, thanks, it's very nice of you, and then her head comes off and chases him and bites at his ankles and he gets away. And I guess this one's kind of scary, you know, if I was like, hey, hey, madam, may I carry your basket? And then she just decapitated her own head and started bowling at me. I guess I'd be a little bit spooked. The, the art that goes with it is, tr is peculiar. What else new? Something about it, man. It just feels very, uh, like, like the dude gets away, like he isn't even killed by the disembodied head, so it's just kind of like there. I'm so confused. So in this furry fanfic, there's a girl who was raised by wolves and she runs around doing wolf girl things and it's kind of creepy, you know, if there's someone raised by wolves, I'd be like, dang man, that's not normal. She just hangs out going like, hey gamers, I'm a human, but I'll woo. And everyone's like, whoa, that's kind of weird. But then nothing really comes of it. So again, uh, we got this one and the May I Carry Your Basket, just both very, but like, why though? Guys, this is just Bloody Mary. Like, this is how to play Bloody Mary. Everybody knows how to play Bloody Mary. 
So the plot is that there's a bride, and after she gets married, she plays some hide and seek. And then Metron closes, and then she's stuck in there until she dies. Oops! Uh, I think being s stuck in a trunk till you die is kind of scary. And I don't think that's a very hot take. But if there's one thing I could change about the story is that is if they, instead of having her found on accident, just never found again. Because I personally think that's far more terrifying. But that's just me. These kids, they find a drum, and they really like the drum. And, then, and when the kid starts hitting the drum, he can't stop. And he keeps drumming faster and faster, hence the name. And he can't stop. And the other kid just gotta watch on as he slowly dies and decays. As the drumming gets louder and louder and faster and fast. The way the story builds up is pretty cool. I think the artwork that's with this one is pretty simple, but I think that simplicity adds the spooktacularness of it. There's a few small things that I like of the story. Like, first of all, I think the pacing is a little bit strange sometimes, but I do think it gets pretty good once the story really starts picking up. I, th I personally think that it would have been higher on the list if they continued pushing that idea of him being unable to stop, but that's just me. I still think it is a pretty solid story. Sounds might seem like kind of like a generic type of ghost story. A bunch of people stay in a haunted house overnight some spooky stuff happens instead of just showing all this stuff flying around they only hear sounds hence the name from above them i think that's kind of creepy the sounds get louder and louder and more intense and i'm a big fan of it the picture that goes along with it is also pretty creepy in my opinion it doesn't show any scary face it's just an empty room this is one of the many stories that was recreated in the new Scary Story to Tell in the Dark movie. I think the problem with the story, in my opinion, is that, like, this creature doesn't really do much. I think if we're ignoring how good this picture looks, the story still kind of holds up. I think the way she um, inadvertently starts causing her dream to unfold is very interesting. I just wish that this spooktastic... Girl? Could have been in it more. This one feels like an adventure hook for D&D. There's this white wolf going around eating live stocks, causing some havoc. It ends with the white wolf killing the dude and eating him alive. And I think that's pretty cool, but it is heavily implied that it's a ghost wolf. It's in a section about ghosts, which is a pretty dead giveaway. But according to the um, Wolf Attack Wikipedia page, only around uh, 211 people died by wolf attack since 2002. I did some digging and I couldn't find an example of any of those uh, attacks being ghost wolf related, uh, but I, I, I don't know man, I'm not a wolf attackologist. This is another pretty popular story whether you heard it from this book or not. Um, pretty much the family go to a house and they're like, hey man, can we stay for a bit? And the family's like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then they leave and they go to a diner and everyone's like, bro, that house kind of burned down a long time ago. And when they go back, they find the house is burnt to ash. It's clearly burnt down here, but like, Two days ago, me and my gamer pal were in there. Personally, I think it was dragged down a bit by having two people instead of one. Because if it was one person, then they think they'd be going insane. But since two people saw the same thing, then it's obviously a ghost. So a dude dies, and his girlfriend doesn't know about it. One day, the dude comes on by like, Hey man, wanna take a horse ride? And she's like, sure. They take a good old horse ride, he returns him, her home safely, and, and the farmer's like, but Jim is dead. I think the story's a bit weird. Why did Jim do that? He, he's a ghost. He didn't do anything rude. He just took her for a horse ride and it was it was done with. I used to read this like all the time. Cause one of the ones that was like still good, but the picture didn't like make me wet the bed. So um, I was all for it. Bess is a story about a man who's like pretty sure that his horse Bess is gonna sister kill him. You know he's gonna be killed by Bess in some way. It leaves you analyzing every sentence like, oh, is this how Bess is gonna kill him? It all sort of comes together after he's killed by a snake. What? I really love the build up and how it leaves you second guessing throughout the whole thing. But like, the death is so anticlimactic. Why a snake? I mean, I guess the snake is in Bess's dead body. But like, Bess didn't kill him, a snake killed him! Everyone's heard this story like once or twice. Couple are hanging out, watching a movie together, 
and she's all like, wow, man, we better get going. And she wants to get going, because on the radio, it's all like, oh, yeah, man, this dude with the hook for hands going around murdering teens. So eventually they leave, but once they get home, they find there is a hook on their door handle. I like this one. I've heard lots of different renditions of the story, but I think this one's a bit tame compared to a lot of different um, interpretations. So this story is about a dude and his kid and they like to swim a lot and that's cool. Everyone likes to do some good old swimming every now and then. But one day they go missing and coincidentally two alligators pop up the next day. A big alligator and a baby alligator. And then everyone's like, well man, something's a little fishy. This one is a little silly. This story reminds me of Shadow Over Innsmouth, and that's like one of my favorite stories by H.P. Lovecraft. Darn, man. This name is pretty similar to a different story we read. But this dog is normal sized! I actually kind of like this one. And a dude is going around doing his dog thing, not liking dogs very much, and then a dog shows up. He's like, hey, dog, stop. And the dog's like, no. And continues doing his thing, running around, scampering back and forth, just being a good boy. Eventually he can get the doggo to go away, but the doggo still shows up every now and then, you know. And yeah, the ending was a bit lame, you know. Either, I think it should have either ended with the dude being murdered by the dog, or the dog being murdered by the dude. They can't coexist together, because that goes against both of their existent rules. But other than that, I liked it. This one's a bit similar to, to Coldest Clay, but I think this one does it quite better. These people, when they meet at a Christmas dance, they hang out, they have a good time. Then Janine's all like, hey man, can you drive me home? I crashed my car on the way here. So he drives her there and he's like, wait, I need your phone number. She died. She was brutally killed in that car accident. I think this one's a lot better than Coldest Clay. This one's a bit foreshadowed, you know? You hear about the car wreck, you hear that it was kind of bad, and you're thinking like, hey, that's kind of odd. And then finding out about the death, instead of just being told by a random farmer, he finds her body. I think that is a bit more traumatizing. So there's this girl named Ellen, right? She's just hanging out in her room till this voice keeps coming up saying that they're gonna get her. The voice keeps getting louder and louder and she keeps calling for her parents, but her parents keep ignoring her. Eventually, the parents run upstairs like, hey, Ellen, what's going on? But she's nowhere to be found. Why do you think that the image of Ellen that even makes, makes it even stranger? Our boy Jim is dying. Oof. And once everyone leaves the room and it's just him, he looks out the window and he sees a hearse pull up with a bunch of small hanging creatures hanging off the side. That's kind of creepy, gamer. You could believe that's a literal just hearse filled with very small people, but I think it's more likely that it's maybe a metaphor for death and his soul being claimed. Sam's parents get him a new pet. It's an adorable little doggy. Turns out the dog is a rabid sewer rat. How the frick do you mix this thing up with that? You know, and the thing about it is that, like, it didn't even look like that. It looked like this. A mixture between the chocolate lady from Spongebob and Dart from Stranger Things. If we're looking at this from a pure perspective of your pet ending up being a rabid rat, then yeah, that's kind of spooky. If I were to find out my boy Gizmo was a rat, I'd be like, man, Gizmo? Yeah, I thought so. The Slithery D is in the goofy section. I, I, I can't really give like a summary because it's like a, like a picture book type deal, so I'll give a dramatic rating for you. The Slithery D came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat me. The Slithery D, he came out of the sea. He ate all the others, but he didn't eat me. I think at face value, yeah, it's kind of silly. You're sort of told about the Slithery D and how it sort of massacred all these people, but you never see the Slithery D. The abruptness of the little kid's death is quite disturbing. In this story, we got two good old pals and they decide to go on a funnel camping trip, but turns out 
there's some spooky Wendigos afoot. I like Wendigos. I think all the Wendigos I've seen in different media are pretty cool. Uh, we got Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. We got uh, Until Dawn. Uh, uh, there were some references to it in Over the Garden Wall. It's a cool big old antler demon or weird zombie thing if you're Until Dawn. But the thing that's different about this intermission Wendigo is that it's not a creature. It's more of a spirit. And I think that's a little bit more scary because like with the normal one to go, boom, shoot in the big old tummy wummy, it's dead. But with the spirit, it, it, it's more work there. Aaron Kelly's Bones is another story in the goof section. It's about this dude named Aaron Kelly. He died, they buried him, but he's still dancing in their living room. We've all been there, you know, you're just trying to have a good old time, and oh frick, it's a spooky, scary skeleton. A dancing skeleton? That sounds kind of quirky though. The way the narrator describes how the body is slowly sort of rotting, I think is a little disturbing, not gonna lie. And I think the picture that accompanies it is G. Willikers, a little bit spooky. Look at that, that's not a fun old spooky scary skeleton. Pretty much there's this old lady whose sister lonely. What a move. And she's like, hey guys, it'd be cool if I had a game or pal to hang out with. And then a bunch of limbs started falling from the chimney. And then they all came together to create one vaguely human-esque creature. And then jumps out of them like, what do you come for? I come for you. What do you come for is a very good story. Um, it does have that terrible jump scare ending that I so despise. But I think the build up is wonderful. And overall, it's a good time. Haunted House starts off as your pretty generic haunted house story. A dude decides to stay in a house with a ghost in it to defeat the, the ghost, ghost with the, with the power, power of, God. of God. And then things go awry. And this story is home to this picture. I think the disappointing thing about it is that like this, this thing becomes friendly in the end. She just wants the sister murder the murderer, which like, Sure, I guess. But you can't just show me that and then be like, actually, she was kind of a gamer. I think so the build up and knowing that the spooky ghost looks like that is good enough on its own. Something was wrong and that something was that this dude, uh, he's not interacting with anybody. He goes to the store and stuff and no one's really talking to him and he sort of a little, feels a little invisible. <laughs> Turns out, he was a ghost. Um, I think, ignoring the fact that it's overdone to death, it is a very good story, I think it's well written. If you don't know what the frick's gonna happen, which I'm sure most people did, then it's very suspenseful, and it reminds me of Sixth Sense, and Sixth Sense is one of my favorite movies. After an epic, hazing prank, two people die. Oopsie! It's left kind of a mystery whether it was a murderer or a ghost. I do like the ambiguous nature where you can sort of analyze the story to see do you think it was a murderer or do you think it was a ghost? Because there were some reports of a murder around these parts, but also it's scary stories to tell in the dark, so a ghost is pretty likely. Gee whiz, fam squad, this one's got some serious Weekend at Bernie's vibes. Our boy Randy, I forgot his name, is on the bus, and Rain Randy sees two dudes with a dude in the middle, and they're like, hey man, you're a little bit tipsy, and, he, and then he doesn't say anything. When they get off the bus, it's revealed that that man was a dead body the whole time. What? You know what? Good old-fashioned murder is always a good time, and I think this one was pretty well cool. Our girl Liz is trying to do some homework and she keeps hearing footsteps. Uh-oh, that's never a good sign. Ever. And overall, it's pretty spooky. So, but it is likely that it could just be Kismo. Come on, man. Not for like a single. It probably could have been her sister playing a good prank. Like she sees footsteps in the snow afterwards, but she could have done a Danny Torrance meme. I think nothing's worse when you're chilling and you hear something like, that shouldn't be being heard. This is a pretty cool poem. I like it. I'm pretty sure it was about like avoiding people who are gonna backstab you. Literally. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, it was cool. The meaning is spooky, I 
thing. But maybe I'm not big, big brain enough to fully comprehend how epic it is. This story is about a town that's all like, hey chief, maybe don't go in the woods. And because everyone thinks there's spooky monsters in there. Except for one dude. It's our boy Tom. He ain't afraid of no ghosts. So his friends are like, hey chief, you're not afraid. Go in those woods, you know, trying to cash his bluffs. And I'm like, yeah, you're scared. But he's not scared. They immediately regret daring him. They're like, hey Tom, maybe come back. But Tom goes missing. I'm a big fan of this picture. I don't know if it's supposed to be Tom or if it's like, like one of the monsters, but whatever it is, it's kind of spooky. So the plot of this one is that a boy is shocked to see that death, like the personification of death, is beckoning for him in the town square. And he asks his grandfather to go on down to the city to try to avoid death. Spoiler alert, you can't avoid death. Anyways, death shows up the grandfather and he's like, sorry man, I was just confused about your son. I was supposed to kill him in the city today. And then, oopsie. I'm always a fan of those type of stories where it's like, it seems normal, well not normal, not too spooky until like a small piece of information is given at the end. The her song, it talks about death. And it talks about how you'll decompose, how the worms are gonna go inside you, you're gonna rot and stuff, you're gonna eat flutter nut or sandwiches out of your own organs. It's a great time. I love some good old fashioned descriptive gore. And I think this story pulls it off pretty well, especially for a children's book. So pretty much this dude is convinced that this old lady's a witch because he ran over her cat a few days ago. It's a situation. So he does a series of like, like rituals that are supposed to kill only witches and then she dies a few weeks later. You could see this as like him getting back on some of those old witches, but I personally think she wasn't a witch, and it's just our buddy Bill's descent into madness as he's pretty sure his livestock are dying because of this random elderly woman. Pretty sure she just misses his, her cat, dude. So pretty much, there's two ladies and they, they live in like a college dorm, but one day, one of them starts chanting, Oh, Suzanne. The other one's kind of like, Hey, dude, knock it off. Now, I can't think of a single reason somebody would be screaming someone else's name that late at night, so she walks over to her and is like, Hey, chief knock it off but her head was cut off this one leaves you with more and more questions the more and more you think about it who did it how is she still talking after she got her head cut off i think that's good type of questions not like dumb questions like that freaking dress one or that little black dog one i think this one incredibly mysterious and leaves you asking questions the more you really think about it Babysitters getting spooky calls. It's like, hey man, I'm getting closer to killing your kids. Hey man, getting closer to killing your kids. And eventually she's tired of it. So she decides to call the cops. The call is coming from inside the house. And I think that's a super cool trope. I like it a lot. Whether it's Black Christmas or Stranger Calls, it's just, it's so creepy, man. Spooky. The kids die. So our buddy Joseph, right, he sees a hearse. They're all spooky saying like, come on man, room for one more, come on in, the hearse is fine. And he's like, nah chief. The next day, he goes to a crowded work elevator and like, there's room for one more. Which like, hey Joseph, that's when you realize something's up. And then when he gets in the elevator, they all die. Not only are elevators a terrible way to go in any situation ever. I also am a fan of the foreshadowing. All right, so out of all like the songs and poems and stuff, this one's my favorite. It talks about death and decomposition, almost like the her song, but I personally like this one a bit more. This is in the funny section of the third book. And the art looks like something straight out of Trevor Anderson's work. He's the guy who's responsible for Long Horse, The Cat, Siren Head, and this Thing. The way he's, he keeps trying to get faster and faster to escape this discur disturbing thing behind him is very cool. I, and I think the way that the, that the thing sort of like nonchalantly asks if anything's wrong with his terrible face, I think that's pretty creepy as it cuts off right there and you're not sure what happens to the guy. Is he dead? Perhaps. Did they have a great dinner? Probably not. So after a lady is so rudely interrupted by a dude on the train about what book she's reading, she's all like, hey man, it's a ghost story. And the dude's like, hey dude, ghosts, pfft, lame. And she's like, see ya chief, and then disappears. 
Of course, the way I described it is pretty goofy, and it isn't the goofy section of the book. I think the way the way the picture look is pretty spooky. Like, it's supposed to be like funny, you know, kind of like, well, look at this guy, but like, eyes don't do that. Cannibalism is always a good time, especially when it's unknowing cannibalism. This lady is married to this pretty rude husband guy who wants some liver, and when she's making it, she accidentally scruffles it all up and eats the liver. So she's like, man, I wonder where I'll get a, no a new food from. And then she takes her dead neighbor's liver and then feeds it to George, and George's a big fan. That's what I mean, man. Nothing's cooler than thinking like, man, that was some good baloney. But it turns out you just ate it, dude, my guy. I think the only problem with this story is that George is a jerk, and I hate him. So I don't really feel too bad that his sister ate a dude. So pretty much there's a psych ward, and only one of the beds are by the window. They all want that bed by the window. So they slowly start killing each other so they get the bed by the window. And by the end of the story, it's revealed there is no window. Now. That's like two layers of spookiness. The fact that they are drove to actual murder to look outside. And also the fact that there was no outside and it was just crazy dudes making it all up. It's a really good twist and like you don't see it coming man. I think it's super well done and I'm a big fan. So pretty much this lady goes to bed and then a spider crawls on her face. She wakes up the next day and then she has a bit of a zit on her face. Zoo wee mama. But over time, it slowly gets bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger till it pops! Pop the pit into spiders! Ugh. It's home to this picture, which. Yikes. So pretty much a cat shows up. And increasingly larger sized cats. They're all like, wait till Martin comes. I don't know what that means. I do think it's able to pull off that like eerie mysteriousness. It makes you think of all types of questions like, who is Martin? Where are the cats coming from? Why are the cats coming from? Can I somehow sneak an HP Lovecraft reference into this spot? So lady's driving, but this car keeps tailing her and flashing his headlights and stuff. And she's like, wow, dude, that's a kind of strange. So eventually she's all like, hey, chief, what are you, why are you following me? He's like, dude, there was someone in your back seat, and he was trying to stab you to death. Maybe you should just read all these books instead of listening to my summaries. But anyways, it's a really great twist that I doubt many people saw coming. I know I didn't. Two girls meet a lady on the road who's playing a pretty dope drum. They're like, hey chief, can I get that drum? And she's like, nah. Unless you b -b 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 bully your parents. And then they b -b 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 bully their parents. So then they're terrible, rotten, terrible, bad children. And then they're like, hey, chief, we were the worst. Can we get our drum? Not enough being a terrible person. Now our parents hate air guns and like, chief, you gotta do worse than that. So then they do worse than that. And then her parents abandon her and she doesn't even get the drum. They're just replaced by a lady with a pig, with, with a peg leg and a glass eye, which like, come on, man, what's wrong with that? You know, like, it doesn't mean she's a bad person. I personally think it was a little cheapened by the glass eye peg leg person. I think it would have been better if they are just left alone on the countryside. The pictures kind of like shows how the girls slowly realize that their parents look like left them forever. The ending is pretty somber and overall pretty spooky. So pretty much there's this girl, Alice. She's living her best life. She's happy, she's confident, she's doing great for herself. People aren't a fan of that because we can't have nice things. So they decide to po -po 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 prank her. Uh, by guy, guy trapping in a room with a dead dude's hand. Thanks to this prankster gangster move, Alice is left emotionally destroyed. And she's just on the ground, fetal position, crying. And whoa, that's not even like, like, God, dude. That's not even like a funny, spooky story for youngsters. That's just really depressing. Somebody Fell From Aloft is the second longest story, I believe. And I think that extra length really adds to it. It gives a lot more time to slowly build up to the reveal of the body showing up on the ship. And I think it's achieved wonderfully. So pretty much, these people are on a ship, things start going awry, spooky stuff occur, people aren't trusting each other, there's intrigue. You know, I can't really, like, you, you really just gotta read this one for yourself. I can't really give a good, like, summary of it. There's a lot of nuances to it that I, I pretty much need to, like, reread the whole story to kind of sort of get into. But pretty much the most important part is that at the end, there, a body falls 
seemingly out of nowhere and pulls the captain overboard, killing him. And I think that the drawing that goes with it is also very eerie in its own great way. And overall, just a really good story. This is another story that I can't recommend enough to just read. This one's like five pages long, man. It's not hard to read. So pretty much their um, strange occurrence be begins happening. You know, things are flying across the room. Things are going all crazy, you know. Things are just being knocked off the of shelves. It's a serious problem. A detective comes over to help them figure it out and they cannot find an answer. One of the theories given to the parents is that a poltergeist has been formed out of their teenage son because he's a teenager. I don't like that one too much. Of course, that's one of the theories given, but it's never explicitly said that that's the, like, exact reason. Maybe there was a phantom rogue cat about. Perhaps? I think the extra length of this story helps escalate this, the occurrences going around. So overall, great story, man. So good, so good. So pretty much our pal Rosemary is in Perry. A very foreign area and one day when her mom gets a little bit sick she leaves her from the hotel room goes to the doctor and when she comes back her room's different and her mom is gone everyone swears that like hey man you're you sure you're in the right hotel but she is in the correct hotel pretend like you're in that situation like do you either a stay in Paris looking for your mom with everyone thinking you're insane or B have to go back home knowing that your mom's just gone forever without a trace. There is actually an explanation given about what happened, um, but it's like in the back of the book and don't read it. It ruins it. Honestly, it's separated from the rest of the story, so I ignore it. It didn't happen, and if you say it happened, shh, it's just so better when you don't know what the frick happened, you know? I really like this one personally. It reminds me of a story from the first book called The Thing, which we'll get to later on. I like The Thing a bit better. This one is pretty similar. Kids look it out the window, things like gets more and more close, approaches faster. It's still great, but I think it could have uh, gone without that. So pretty much there's this grave digger. Right before he buries this old lady, he takes some coins that recover on her dead old eyes. Of course, this is a scary story to tell in a dark book, the old lady is a fan of it. Later that night, she shows up and ain't too happy. There's a lot of like repetitiveness to the story structure, how it, it talks about the wind blowing and the fire crackling, and it's like, who's got my money? And she's like, woo! -hoo -hoo. And it's like clickety clink, and, and it keeps sort of getting progressively quicker and like more like snappy to the point. I think that's very creepy because it sort of builds up the fear, and as soon as you flip the page, you're just faced with that spooky image. And I think it was done great. It ends with one of those jump scares, which I'm not a fan of, but I don't think this one takes away too much from the story. I think it gives a conclusive enough ending to um, The Grave Digger, unlike a lot of other The Jump Scare. Yay, we got more cannibalism! As I said previously, unknowingly cannibalizing a dude and then enjoying it is pretty cool. Um, a butcher wants to start selling some new meat, so he cuts up a kid, People eat the kid. As the demand rises, so does the supply. As the butcher begins killing more and more people to meet the demands for his special sausage. Eventually, of course, they all find out and they're not too happy about it. I'm afraid of this one because I like how the butcher slowly gets more and more sort of stuck in this hole of murdering people. Kind of reminds me of that film Bucket of Blood where the dude has to do something similar but with art. Big fan of cannibalism. Yo, hit me up on Twitter. Your favorite cannibalism related stories. So pretty much two farmhands, they're not liking their job. They get a scarecrow to spook the crows and they decide to beat the frick out of the scarecrow. They name it after their dumb boss. One day, of course, as these stories go, the doll comes to life and starts causing some shenanigans. One of the farmhands leave, when they come back, they find his farmhand friend has been skinned alive. It's, pr it's pretty metal. I really like how the two farmhands are slowly driven to madness from the monotony of their job, causing them to take out their anger on an actual doll. The way the doll goes from vague grunting to like shambling on the roof is just very jarring. And the reader knows something's up with Harold from the beginning, but you never realize how much is up with Harold until he skins a man alive. Oh my god. So pretty much it, the kids offered $200 to spend a night in a spooky place with this dog. They hang out in the place, some dude starts chanting louder and louder, and the dog starts chanting too. Dogs aren't supposed to do that. And then eventually a head falls from the, from the chimney. 
and kills the dog, spooks him out of fright. It's never like sp specifically said if the kid dies, but like it's heavily implied. All right, I'm a little biased on this one because this is my favorite story to read when I was younger. I remember one of my mom's friends would read this to me and then she did the jump scare at the end and I haven't, I still haven't forgiven her. At first I was thinking, whoa, that's kind of silly though. What do these weird Channings even mean? But I think as it sort of sinks in like, hey man, dogs aren't supposed to make those noises. The way the chants slowly get louder and louder until reaching sort of the climax of the head falling from the chimney is very suspenseful and very well done. What I think the scariest story in all the scary story to tell in dark books is the thing as you read from the you and your gamer pal hanging out you know and you see this thing at your window you keep running away but it keeps following you and you're thinking man this thing is kind of spooky until you eventually realize that that thing isn't just a thing it is what you will look like in the future this grotesque rotted thing is what you're gonna be not, not only can it be seen as a more literal type of zombie type creature, which is kind of spooky, it can also be seen as a more uh, metaphorical sense, as like um, the process of time slowly marching towards you infinitely with no true escape. I always thought that feeling of like not really being able to escape something that's closer and closer to you has always been pretty scary. That's why I like It Follows and Stuart Little. Overall, I'm a fan of all of these stories, and I'm glad I could get this video out before Halloween. You know, I hope this video of me ranking the definitive, not subjective at all, hard fact ranking of the spookiest, scariest story of the time of dark stories. If you disagree with this video, drop a like, and if you agree with it, drop a like. Subscribe, like, if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Goodbye! See you guys. Bye!